Taking of the bread, precious feast, all else surpassing wondrous love for you and me. While we feast, Christ gently whispers, do this in my memory. God so loved what wondrous measure, love and gave the best of him, bought us with that matchless treasure, yea, for us his life was given, precious feast, all else surpassing wondrous love for you and me while we feast christ gently whispers do this in my memory feast divine else surpassing precious blood for you and me gently whispers do this in my memory precious feast all else surpassing wondrous love for you and me while we feast Christ gently whispers do this in You know, most of us, I think, are sports fans to some degree, and even if you're not, you're probably aware of, you know, sometimes a sports team is a, a huge favorite. You know, you guys as Buckeyes football fans and I as a UK basketball fan, our teams oftentimes come into a game as a huge favorite. You go into the game expecting to just whitewash the other team. It's going to be a blowout. And how often is it that all of a sudden it's halftime and your team is down? You know, behind and you're thinking what what just happened and it wasn't because your team wasn't more physically dominant and, and uh, better athletes and so on usually it's because your team was not mentally prepared for the game they weren't in the right frame of mind you know they came into it not even thinking about the game they were just going to roll over the opponent um, and there they go into halftime because they weren't ready for it, they weren't in the right frame of mind, here they are behind. Well, we see Paul in 1 Corinthians say that that's a very important part of what we do here every Sunday, too, is we have to be in the right frame of mind. Paul said uh, that we should each examine ourselves. You know, he was addressing some issues with the Lord's Supper. People weren't in the right frame of mind when they were taking the Lord's Supper. They were thinking about other things. They were... Um, not focusing on Christ and his sacrifice for us and about each other. So we too have to make sure that we're in the right frame of mind when we take the Lord's Supper. Um, and if you've ever played a sport, you know that getting into the right frame of mind for a ball game doesn't start at the whistle. You know, that's something you prepare for leading up to. And... Um, and usually that's what's happened in those games where the, the huge favorite is, is behind at halftime. It's because they didn't mentally prepare leading up to the game for it. But also what happens probably 95 plus percent of the time after halftime. That team, that huge favorite, goes into the locker room and the coach helps them get their mind right. They get mentally prepared at halftime and they come out in the second half and they take care of business and they win the game. So for any of us who have not yet gotten mentally prepared, I'm gonna allow us about a minute of 
of silence before we go into the Lord's Supper so that we can use this as our halftime and make sure that if we haven't already done it, we can get ourselves mentally prepared to uh, take the Lord's Supper in the right frame of mind. Pray with me, please. Our Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we are so grateful for the gift of your Son, uh, the hope of eternal life that we have through it, your willingness to, to send your only Son to a certain, uh, certain death and, and certain torture. And Father, we are so thankful for Christ and his willingness to give up himself for us. Father, we pray now that each of us who takes this, this bread, which represents his broken body, will do so in a manner that pleases you. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Pray with me again, please. Our Father, we, we again come to you in prayer and, and we continue the thoughts from before that we're so thankful for your Son and, and that one perfect sacrifice for all time. And that as we also take of this, this fruit of the vine, which represents his blood, uh, we do so in a manner that pleases you. It's in your Son's name we pray. Amen. reminder that we have the, the offering box, the white box up here, so if you haven't already, uh, at the end of the service, remember to drop off your, your offering there. <clears throat> Let's stand for this last song, Oh Happy Day, and then we'll stand for, or we'll just remain standing for the uh, closing prayer. Oh, happy day that fixed my choice on thee, my Savior and my God. Well, may this glowing heart rejoice and tell its raptures all abroad. Happy day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Tis done that great transaction's done. I am the Lord's and He is mine. He drew me and I followed on, charmed to confess the voice divine. 
Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray, and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day, when Jesus washed my sins away. Real quick, I had a thought this week. Just, uh, just place this in your mind, and if you want to know more and if you're interested, we've all heard of Christmas in July. How about caroling in July? So if you're curious, get with me after services. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, just we just again thank you so much for this beautiful day, this beautiful weather that we can again be out here and and be outside and even when things look like maybe we wouldn't be able to do it, you have delivered for us, Lord, and just help us to be reminded of these things. Lord, help us to, to cast off our dirty rags and and to, to dress the way we should dress with your Son as we go out into the world this week. Lord, we, we see many challenges, many things that most of us have not seen in our lifetimes as we watch the news and we see evil and trying to portray itself as good and we see good being portrayed as evil. Lord, help us to remember and help us to that you're in control, Lord, and that even though we see these things on TV, oftentimes they are dramatized maybe even more than what uh, they are and that if we have you in our lives, Lord, our lives can can be free of of this drama. But we also know that some of it is real, Lord, and we ask you to be with our leadership. We ask you to be with our law enforcement. We ask you to be with all those that are suffering and trying to figure things out, Lord. I know with your wisdom and your love, this these things just wouldn't wouldn't be occurring the way they are. Lord, be with those that are continuing to fight the pandemic and those that are ill. And We see more cases, Lord. We just pray that those people will make a full recovery. But let us not forget those that are also suffering from the illnesses and things and loneliness of the everyday life that has nothing to do with these things we see on the news. Lord, again, thank you so much for your son, Jesus. And just help, help us to have him in our heart. In his name we pray. Amen.